Hi, Pauline. How are you going today? Good, thank you, Rita. How are you? Yes, good, thank you. Um, thanks for taking the time to answer a few questions that I have for you today. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> so let's get straight to it. Why would someone need your site when there's so many cookbooks and online resources available now for people with food allergies? Nearly all resources that I've come across only cater for one allergy at a time. And there is an increasing number of people with multiple food allergies and they have great difficulty finding recipes for their needs because they have to substitute out so many different ingredients. So the, what makes our site is special is that um, people can custom make their search so they can put in exactly what their intolerance or their allergy is and um, the database will sift away any recipes that have those ingredients in them and leave them with a list of recipes that are perfectly safe for their condition. And there is no other website in the world currently that offers that service. Excellent. So Pauline, why did you use the membership model on the uh, website? Because I'm the parent of a child with multiple food intolerances and I know what an isolating experience it is to be managing a condition like that. And I feel that very strongly that as a community, we can support each other. So the only way to really establish a good online community is to have a closed membership site. If it was just a, an open website where people come and go, that there is no sense of community and there's no capacity for, for sharing. So that's why. Excellent. And uh, why has the site changed from a free site to a paid membership site? The site has been in development and while it was in that development phase, it's been free. We couldn't charge for it when it wasn't up to the standard that we wanted it to be. When yeah. we first went online in August 2010, we had about 100 recipes on there and um, our search function was limited to about 10 categories. We've extended it to about 20 now and we've also uh, upgraded so that Every ingredient on the site has been categorised across 30 different fields and we've also added um, a search by diet facility. So we've, we've spent a lot of money and a lot of time to ensure that it is the best possible resource and that it's completely reliable and really to keep growing it and expanding it we, we need to charge for it. Uh, and we can't embrace an advertising model at this point because we have really high standards. We're not just going to flog a product because it's going to make us money. We need to scrutinise every product and ensure that the ingredients are safe. We don't want to be selling stuff to people that they, they can't or won't use. So, um, And we don't really have the time to do that because we want to extend our, our recipe base. We want to make it the best recipe site for allergies and intolerances and that's where we need to devote our time. So we figured that people who have the issue, have the need, would understand that and would be willing to pay for the service, particularly since there's, you know, no one else that's catering for people with multiple food intolerances. Yeah. And um, can I be sure that the ingredients in the recipes are correctly categorised? Yes, we've gone to great extent to read all of the ingredients on the site and ensure that they're correctly categorised according to the latest scientific research. And they're all locked into the database now so that when recipes are added, they will automatically categorise correctly. So that was another reason why we haven't charged for it to date because we wanted to be sure that that was all working really well and, and now we can confidently say that it is. So there's a lot of allergies and intolerances out there. How did you prioritise what allergies and intolerances you were catering for within the database? Um, it is true that there are a lot. There's, I think there's over 170 different things that people can be allergic to. That's in terms of food, although I think it probably extends beyond that. But 90% of food allergy sufferers um, are affected by eight different foods. They're, they're called the top eight. And we, we cater for those top eight. And in addition to that, we have shellfish, peanuts, and corn as well. So we've got 11 different categories that we cater for in the, in the allergen selection. 
And there are four main food intolerance or food chemicals that cause issues for a large majority of people, and that's salicylates, amines, glutamates, and oxalates. So we have incorporated those. And we have followed the research of Dr. Sue Shepherd, who is a leading dietitian nutritionist and has studied irritable bowel syndrome. She herself has celiac disease and she is passionate about helping people with irritable bowel and and celiac disease to manage their diet to alleviate pain. And she has discovered that sort of FODMAP theory. So we we have those ingredients um, included in our search as well. So it's a very extensive search process. And we can categorize by diet type. So we've got things like the paleo diet, FODMAP diet, the gluten-free, caffeine-free diet, which is used for um, children with autism, and uh, a number of others. We've got vegetarian, vegan. So basically people, if they are following a protocol they can, and they're not necessarily allergic or intolerant, they can just go to search by diet and find recipes for using that. And so where do you get all of your uh, recipes from? My daughter's condition meant that I had to do a lot of hunting down of recipes for a number of years and um, I would buy cookbooks and find that only three recipes would work for her and I spent a lot of time adapting and adjusting and learning how to substitute ingredients. So originally a lot of um, recipes came from, from me but as we've gone along we've had people sending us recipes and we've, we've you know asked friends for recipes and so, you know, we've expanded our database as we've gone and we really hope to, I guess, harness the, the wealth of knowledge in the allergy and intolerance community. Excellent. And um, how, do, how can I connect with other members? I've got a Facebook page and Twitter account and, and a YouTube channel. And Facebook, I guess, is where most of our members connect at present. But we are planning on introducing a forum this year so that people can talk about particular topics that are relevant to them with other members. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's all the questions I have for you today, Pauline. Thank you, Rita. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for your time and you have a great day then. Thank you. You too. Bye.